Okay, so let's go ahead and load this guy up with some software so we can play sumo or line follow and such. Um, I have some sample code uh, that you can get to. You can go to my website. If you go to code examples and give it a moment, I have the, the uh, let me pause it. Sorry about that, I have the site editor open. It always makes it run slow. Um, go to the enrichment program and if your robot is from uh, after the holiday in 2016 uh, you want to go to second generation robot and click on this okay and what we want to do is we want to go ahead and copy all of this code and we're going to go ahead and put it let me get this back here Let's open that up. I'm going to take this. All right. And now I have it pasted into a new window. Okay. So hopefully you've got this uh, library installed from the previous uh, video. Let's look at setup. Um, this is motors two and three. The reason is, is because motors one and four are actually here. So it's one, two, three, four. We chose two and three just because it's physically closer to the motors themselves. This is important. This is where you can set, if your robot curves dramatically to the left or the right, the maximum speed is 255. I have them both set for 250. So you could speed one up a little bit, one wheel up a little bit, or slow down one wheel quite a bit. And by doing so, you can generally set your robot so that it goes perfectly straight. Uh, this should be familiar from the last video, A0 through A5. We have them set as inputs, and we've turned on their resistors, so there's current going to it. This next group is where we're going to see all the code for the directions, F for forward. And again here, see, if your robot is, I have sort of a base set up here, but ultimately this is the one that's called the most, okay? And here is where you'd really adjust it. So you can actually make it go faster if you want. You can set this to 255 and 255, and your robot will go faster, which could be important for, uh, <clears throat> for Sumo. Or if you want to straighten it up, you can play with these numbers to set the speed of each wheel. Um, then it calls forward for both of them, and it runs this for a period of time. And I'll explain that in here a bit. Um, backwards or back up, same thing. Maximum speed in this case puts both motors in reverse and it runs it for a period of time. Right and left, same basic thing. Uh, sets the speeds of, to maximum and in this case one wheel goes backwards and one goes forward causing the robot to spin. It does it for a period of time, both right and left. Stop, it actually releases the motor. It makes it stop. And let's take a look here. If we, um, if we take a look at what's going on here, remember it's, it goes through 0 to 5. So A1, A1 was the one hooked up to this sensor. And here is A4. So if A1, this is a digital read. You haven't seen this probably yet. But digital read is simply looking for on or off. Remember, that's all this was when we clicked it. It was either over 1,000 or around 15. Uh, if the digital read of this pin is low, okay, in other words, it saw the 15, it's off, then it stops for about 100 milliseconds or a tenth of a second. It goes backwards for about two tenths of a second. It stops again briefly, and then it goes to the left for two tenths of a second. Okay, same thing here. A4 checks it if it's high or low, and then it does the exact sort of thing here. It makes it stop, it goes backwards, stop again, and it goes right. So this way it, it adjusts to see if it bumps into here. Do you want to attack a robot, or do you want to run away? Currently it's set up to attack. If it bumps here, it turns toward it. You could make it bump here and go away by changing this left and this right. These are the analog pins. A0 was this one here, okay? And what it is, is if it was on the black line, you remember my robot, yours might be different. My robot, it went up to like 650. So if analog read A0 is greater than 500, 
In other words, it's on black line. It's like 600. It stops briefly, and it turns right for about a half a second. Okay, so it turns this way to avoid the line. If it is, if A5, this one, okay, hooked in pin A5, is greater than 500, it stops briefly, and it turns to the left. The default is forward. So if none of these are true, not true, not true, and it checks not true, and it checks not true, none of those end up being true, the default is forward. So it goes forward, but not very long, because if none of the sensors are triggered, this whole process takes hardly any time at all. Okay, So it takes a split second to check, and then it goes forward for five milliseconds. And it takes a split second to check, and goes forward for five milliseconds. So most of the time, it's actually just getting hit to go forward. So we don't need to take a lot of time. You could probably speed your robot up a little bit if you make it like 10 or 15 milliseconds. But then again, that also means while this is running, you're not checking, okay? So if you make this 50 or 100, well, then your robot's gonna be driving forward for 50 or 100, and it might just drive right over the line. So it's best to keep this number small. Um, I think that's it. Why don't we load it up and see what it does? So, I'll pause it. See. All right, so it's running. I'm going to put the battery in. It's actually running off USB right now, so it's kind of wimpy. And actually, these batteries are getting close to dead, so it doesn't help a lot. Let's check our sensors. So, if we load a black line, hear it? Switching directions. Check this one. Yep, it's working. Check this one. Yep, that's working. And this one. Excellent. Everything seems to be working. Let me pause it, switch cameras, and uh, we'll see it in the arena. Okay, let's do a real test. Set it down. And you can see when it runs into the line, Turn into a void. Let's check these sensors here. So if a robot was here, it would turn to attack. Bang, crashes into it. Turns to attack. It's probably almost turning too far, actually. You might want to make it turn a little less, because now it turns until it hits this one. It just kind of does, oh, well, that time it collides. Okay? So you got the basic idea of how to do this simo. And you can obviously change the turns quite a bit. Let me uh, switch cameras real quick and I'll wrap this up. So the last thing I want to mention is, um, actually let's make it stop. You know what I'm going to do, I'm actually just going to make this change to an S and then we'll load it and what it should do is unless the sensor goes off it stops. Cool, that worked out perfectly so now it's quiet. So let's say you want to make it follow a line instead of uh, stay in an arena. That's really not very hard, okay? These sensors here were your feelers, okay? So if this were to uh, trigger, oh, there it triggers, okay? If that triggers, it causes it to turn toward an object. What we're really interested in doing is simply using these, okay? Now think about it, right now, if it sees something here, it turns away, all right? But if you're following a single black line, what you actually want to do is turn toward it. Okay, so what you would do is instead of making it, so if A0, this sensor sees a line, instead of turning that way, okay, to, or to avoid it, what you actually want to do is you want to turn it slightly this way. You want to nudge it, all right? So you turn this right into a left and make this number a lot smaller because remember it was turning all the way, okay? You just want to nudge it. So if it hits a line, it nudges, and then if it hits a line, it nudges, and it hits a line, it nudges. Okay, so you want these numbers to be more like 50 or 20 or something like that. You'd probably have to play with it depending on the arena. So you'd change this right to a left and this left to a right. And these numbers, probably in the order of 50, 30, something like that, much smaller. So that is it. I think I've said everything I wanted to say about setting this up. And I hope it was informative and I hope to see you again soon.